Hello. So I was saying that I had actually sent my twin a couple of Lindy Cowling videos and I have shared information with him just to the degree that I'm guided to share. I always use my intuition and really tap into his energy and I just feel what I feel he's he's ready for at this point in the 3D, in the physical. In 5D the connection is getting stronger and stronger and I can speak to him in the 5D about anything and he understands everything in the 5D connection. Um, when I told him about Twin Flames, to back it up actually, I had first been telling him that I thought my son is an indigo child uh, or a crystal child. Um, and I was looking up some information to send him on the topic and I found a really in-depth article about it. And I'm reading through it like, oh my goodness, this sounds just like my twin. Like, this sounds even more like him than my son. Like, it's very similar in a way. So I sent him this article and I think he's just like, oh, wow, yeah. It totally sounded like him to a T, like just highly sensitive, sort of looking around at the world. And it sounds like myself to a certain degree as well, kind of looking around the world, like, What's wrong with everybody? Why is it run this way? And why why is humanity this way? And kind of being a bit of a rebel, wanting to do things your own way because it makes sense to you, sort of going off the beaten path, not being able to be confined. So I'm sending him this, I, oh hi, you're basically an angel, you're an indigo. So I send him that. Then one day we were talking on on FaceTime or something and then we were texting and he's just really going on and on. It was a time that we came together very close and he's going on and on about this, you know, what he feels. And it was so cute. The way he described it is he told me that when he would be, you know, in town, he would physically crave me. He told me that um, he gets a pain in his chest it feels like anxiety or like you're on drugs or something. He can't describe it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know what he's feeling. And you know, and even during a lot of this, this separation and coming together, there was times like he would tell me, you know, Tulisha, I just cried or, you know, just things that, that he was going through and processing his pain. Um, and I started noticing, okay, like I think he's, He's going through spiritual awakening, like, oh, now he's going through this, and I know it, and I'm just choosing not to tell him. Um, so I ended up finally saying, okay, I had mentioned it to him a while back, around the time when his friend was in town, I did say, oh, my friend, I kind of made it like, oh, my friend, she thinks we're this thing called Twin Flames, and I didn't really elaborate much on it, and he's just like, oh, okay. I don't know if he looked into it at that time, but then by this time, I said, okay, all these things that you're describing, I've looked into that thing my friend told me a long time ago, and I truly believe this is what we are. It's a soul connection, um, and I was telling him some of those, like, initial signs, you know, like, living in different countries or having physical distance is common, the age gap is common, and then just barriers between you for being together and coming together and pulling apart. So he was like, oh, okay, yeah, like, send me this information. I was like, okay, I'll send it to you. So I sent him, again, another article and two Lindy Cowling videos, one just about it was a couple of her original ones that, you know, I didn't want to send him anything too new age, spiritual. He's, he's very, like, he's almost put down these sorts of things to me in the past. I'm like, I'm really scared. <laughs> he's going to think I'm a weirdo and I'm crazy and I'm obsessed with him. Again, all this fear is coming up in me. But I sent it to him anyways and I just let him sit with that. And he wrote me after and his response was, just wow that's it like just those two words just wow so I was like oh my goodness he he gets it he knows this is what we're like and then he quickly switched the topic in his usual sort of fashion so we talked again 
you know, a few days after that. And I said, so what did you think about all that? And he was just like, oh, well, yeah, unless there's a lot of crazy coincidences like that, it really does sound like us. It's crazy. And I was like, yeah, right, it is. And again, I didn't want to elaborate on it too much. But I told him it was really odd. In the beginning, we would talk about our favorite films. And one of my favorite films is Walk the Line. I love that movie. It's Johnny Cash and June Carter story. I remember watching that movie back when it came out and just thinking I was married at the time and the thought honestly came in my mind like, hmm, I wonder if my husband at the time or I will, will find our connection like that. The thought just came in my head. I was like, oh, that's amazing. And I always felt connected to them and I remember that when June died, Johnny died shortly after and I was like, oh, it just hit me like I was like oh my god that's beautiful wow like and I would just see them together and they were very Christian but they were so spiritual together and I know in the movie it was like they kept being separated and he would push her away and she would pull away too but then you know she had to help him through his addictions and I'm like they were twin flames man like this is insane so I told him that it's crazy how we love that movie. And of all things, we watched the movie, oh, what was it? Dewey Cox. Like, it's like a joke movie about that. That's a movie that my twin and I watched together, not the actual <laughs> Walk the Line. It was a stupid, it's just so funny though, but it was a good one. So we had watched that. So I'm just laughing to him like, oh, I think they're twin flames as well. And he's just like, wow. So again, I couldn't elaborate too much because he starts running, he starts getting scared. Um, and he did. He He's pulled away recently. Um, I don't know. Lately, we come together and we pull apart, come together, pull apart. Jealousy purge came up not too long ago. I started just being so jealous too and suspicious and... A while ago I did find out he was seeing somebody where he lives and in a way it's kind of like I can't blame him but yet in a way I felt betrayed or he, he didn't tell me and I got mad at him for lying to me and again the 3D stuff comes up every once in a while and then we work through that and then something else will come up. So yeah most recently there was um, jealousy, some anger and rage came out. Even on my part, I shocked myself. Um, we didn't speak for a month and a bit. And that was, it was weird because for the first time I went into surrender and it wasn't as hard as it ever was before. Um, lately, what Lee and Sherry said about being the standstiller, I love that, that Sherry said that. I get it. I get it now. It's just now me in my energy. I'm standing still. I'm holding space. My heart is open to him. I love him. I love him unconditionally. He could be a bum on the street and I will honestly love him. I had a dream not long ago that I went to go see him and he looked horrible. His eye was like closed up and infected. He was dirty. He was greasy. His clothes were horrible. He was a mess. And he looked at me in my dream that, and this dream was so real. And he just said, Talisha, like, you cannot possibly love me. And I just said, I don't care. I love you. I will help you. I will help you to get better. And that dream is a metaphor for what's going on in real life. He has a lot of healing to get through. I don't want to get deep into his personal problems because that's, that's not my place to share that with the world. I'm here speaking to you guys from my heart, and that's my choice, not his. But he has healing that he has to do, and I've sure had healing that I had to do, and I'm still doing. Um, you know, my life wasn't easy growing up. I know it could be a lot worse, but um, I was a product of an accidental pregnancy. I found my dad when I was 16 years old, and I've had a lot of pain in finding him and feeling like I didn't belong and feeling like I didn't have that male figure in my life that taught me what it was to be loved by a man, your own father, you know, 
I've had amazing men in my life, my stepfathers, but there was something missing and, you know, I'm still processing that pain. And then with my mom, she had her own difficulties growing up. She was growing up, you know, she was 19 when she had me and I, I understand now. She, it's like I was growing up with her and seeing her dealing through her difficulties. And it's, it's crazy to me because when I'm doing ayahuasca, I've really seen deeply how the things that I had to face growing up were preparing me for my twin. It's the same. My mom and my twin actually really remind me of each other. There's their difficulties, their struggles, um, depression, addictive behavior, things like that. And also just this sort of acting tough but being super sensitive on the inside. There's a certain difficulty in dealing with that and knowing how to navigate that. So even my ex, my ex too, a lot of similar characteristics. I see a pattern here, but yet I also see that I was meant to be raised by my mother. I was meant to have the childhood I had to get me to where I am today so I can heal the pain from now and my past lives and help my twin through his healing process. Right now I am, I'm just giving him space. I love him so much. I, it's, it's unimaginable. I would marry him tomorrow, but yet I know that it's just not the right time yet. You know, he, re he reached out to me recently and that was really nice. And I responded back and I'm just taking it slow and giving him the space and then he called me and then I called him back and oh he he just looked at me we talk on FaceTime and he just looked at me and I just felt that connection and he just looks right at me when we're speaking on FaceTime and I just feel this love and again he's he asked if he could call me back he was with his friend and they were going to go Christmas shopping I think um, so he asked me if he could call me back and I said that was fine and he didn't call me back um, so since then you know I just I hold this space in my heart for him I, and I trust the union he's not gonna find someone like me and I know this he's not gonna find his other half we we fit we belong together he is he is me, I am him. We mirror each other. I learn from him. I could have never learned all I've learned from him, from anybody else, of course. You know, that's the whole point of this, is learning and growing. And this time of separation, as much as I probably would have kicked and screamed and resisted it if he gave me the choice, I know that we've needed it. It's been so important for us in our growth. He's still growing, I'm still growing. Now I'm at this point that I want to help other people, I want to help other twins, I want to share my story. I'm doing coaching and just, you know, basically I, w I just want to take what I've learned, the mistakes I've made, and in coaching other people, I just try to tell them what I get now that I didn't get back then when they were maybe at a certain stage. I you know there's certain people that will be drawn to get help from me or certain people they'll be drawn to get help from another soul and that's fine we are all here it's already been set out i feel like there's certain people that we're supposed to help and even for me i have the people that i go to for guidance um along the way and healing and someone wrote me recently like oh you're not you're not a true twin you and your twin aren't doing charity work and if you aren't doing service to others that for others then this can't be twin, true twin flames. And it's not just charity work or 3D. This is going on a deeper level. When I've done ceremonies, I've done ayahuasca ceremonies, I felt like I was healing the collective. I felt like I was healing for Mother Earth. I felt like I'm purging, I'm physically purging. It feels like energy from the collective all this pain is like coming through my body and I'm a vessel I feel like the people that I help the people that I coach I'm transmuting energy pain I'm taking it from them and I'm being this vessel to pass it up to source 
when I speak on here, I feel like I'm channeling. Certain things are just coming straight through me, straight through the heart, and I'm sharing it with you the way Source wants me to. That is the mission. That is work. It's You can't judge and just say, because someone's not doing charity work, per se, they're not serving humanity. I know that I'm serving humanity. I'm serving my twin. I'm healing myself. And even if we do nothing more than awaken, go into ascension, you're serving as an example. Even just holding the space of unconditional true love, even just holding the space of loving yourself, you are being an example to humanity. And that's why the Twin Flames are at the forefront of this mission. I feel it. We have a mission set out for us so that we can be examples. And just purging through pain. Oh my gosh. That's, a, that's the hardest thing you can do in your life. Most people out there will live their lives pushing it down, pushing it down. Whether it be prescription drugs, alcohol, drug, regular street drugs, whatever you know, food addictions, everything, exercise addictions, um, workaholics, whatever, gambling. There's so many addictions to try to numb yourself out. And when I go into that pain and I go into that healing, I know I'm doing the right thing. And I know I'm doing it not only for myself, but for the collective energy. And I know also that when I feel that true love, that unconditional love for my twin, I'm putting the energy of unconditional love into the grid, the grid work that's around our planet and in our universe. I'm spreading that, that energy. I feel it. And that's why I'm making love. I feel it. It's going deep into that energy. But I do feel there's negative energy and that's the battle. That's fighting the battle. And that's been the hardest part of this journey is to battle that negativity those negative memories and negative, um, you know, paradigms and conditions and templates, whatever you want to call it, those thoughts, the, just the ego, ego going at it, battling through all that, it is so hard. Just recently, a couple weekends ago, oh my goodness, this pain, there's been a lot of big energy shifts. And it was around, there was an 11-11 portal, but the one that was in December, it was an 11 universal month and on the 11th day. And then there was um, a new moon the next day. It was 12-12 and oh, it was a lot of energy at this time. I went into something so deep, like this purge or it felt like I was clearing a negative entity from my twin and oh my god, it was like an exorcism. <laughs> I got scared. It was, I had to ground the most I've ever in my life. I threw up. It was like, it felt like being on an ayahuasca trip. I purged, but it did. By the end of it, I felt like, oh, I had cleared something. And I will tell you, my twin came closer after I processed whatever that is. Um... So yeah, that's where I'm at today. My twin is in contact. We're in contact with each other. And, you know, I'm not pushing it. I'm not rushing it. I have all the time in the world. I'm being patient, more patient than ever. Um, there's so many little tidbits of information. I'll keep putting out some videos. Like, there's literally been, like, changes to my diet and... Things I've done, you know, specific little rituals and things that I found work for me. And someone asked in a comment if I can share the specifics, and I will. There's so much information in me that wants to come out. It's just, I come on here when I feel guided, and, you know, I do. I feel like I need to be grounded. I'm a little more hyped up for these past three videos. I don't know, I feel more energy. It's probably these shifts. But I just wanted to get the information out there and, you know... There's a whole bunch of details within my story that I know I've missed and I just want to end it off. Kind of the past nine months I really just skimmed over it and generalized but it's been a lot of up and down, a lot of healing for, for my twin and I know that he's basically 
facing his shadows. He's going through his dark night of the soul. I've gone through my um, chakras. I feel my throat chakra right now. <clears throat> chakras have really been clearing. I cleared my throat chakra recently. I could feel that. I was sick with something in my throat for like a month and a half or something like that. I had no voice and it felt like it was actually clearing something. Um, that made a huge difference. I now feel that I'm s stepping into my power. I feel like right now I'm working on my solar plexus, um, coming into power, coming into my divine feminine energy, 